Welcome to the Tree of Zero Progression guys. In this video, I'm going to help you guys how to gear up your character starting all the way from the beginning and all the way to end game. One of the first thing that you want to do is actually find this NPC right here. Her name is Lena and she is located in Calpeta City. Now after talking to Lena, she is going to give you a bunch of different options and you want to choose the third option. This option will pull up a list of equipment boxes from level 40 all the way to 380. Now of course, you are not going to see any of this option if you're level 1. However, one of the options that you want to choose is actually your Groves Armor Set Selection Boxes. This is a scalable equipment which goes all the way from level 1 to 440 and you can actually choose between a physical and magic set. If you're playing swordsman, cleric, archer, and scout, you want to choose the physical set. If you're playing wizard or cleric, you want to choose a magic set. One of the most interesting things about cleric classes is that you can actually play in either physical or magic form. All you have to do is turn on one of these attributes from your base classes, and you can become either a physical cleric or a magic cleric. You can choose any weapons and armor set from the equipment boxes. However, I do recommend picking up the leather armor set for any starting character because it provides 50% more damage bonuses, 20% extra crit rate, and it increases your character critical cap from 50% to 60%. Play and cloud armors are more specific designed for PvP content. However, a full plus support cleric benefit a lot from having cloud armors because it increases healing values based on their highest attack status. Next up, you want to hit F5 hotkey from the keyboard. This will open up the episode questline tab. You want to do these questlines as well as possible because it provides so much value for the new and return players. Now, clearing the quest from the episode questline will provide players 4x amount of rewarded silver for the first time that they clear, which means you can earn quite a lot of silver without having to fuel farming in the early game. Not only that, you can also earn a lot of experience to level up your character with the EXP card that you get from the episode questline reward. More importantly, you want to clear episode 1 up to 11 to unlock the legend and goddess card slot. These two slots will come in pretty handy for your endgame progression. Episode reward are the biggest selling point for both early and mid game progression because new and return players can obtain a full end game of gears from episode 12 and 13 questline. Episode 12 to provide players full Vasila gears plus the Vibor selection box, while episode 13 ones offer demonic or goddess inkers, caroling accessory, level 10 art equipment, and credible Luciferian vouchers. Episode 13 2 offer 32 multiplier EXP tum, refined scale material to upgrade Vasili C gears, enhanced ace box, two common broker seal, 30 identified basic tum, and two special monster card selection album. Players can choose any gears and weapon from the Vasilisa gear box and any Vibora from the Vibora selection box. I recommend picking up the leather armor set and your character class choice weapons for the goddess equipment. Now, for the Vibora, you want to pick up at least one coordination and one class Vibora of your choice, or for the second option, you can pick up two class Vibora of your choice. The first option provides more benefit for your character because players can equip as many coordination as they want on their goddess equipment why the class of Ivor are limited up to two. The second option enables players to get a head start on the class of Ivora and then utilizing Galamid Inkers instead. Either one of these options is fine, but the coordination will offer way much more value later on down the road. Next up is the episode 13 one reward. Using the demonic or goddess inker voucher will allow players to pick up any inker of their choice. I recommend picking up the overload inkers because it is one of the best inker that work on any classes. Once you unlock the anchor, you can go in and open up the equipment stores in your inventory and apply it on Vasilisa equipment. The art register voucher enables players to register one of the art of their choice in the equipment storage. It costs around 100,000 silver to craft one and then use the level 10 art voucher to get it to max level. I recommend picking up the divine retribution art because it is one of the best art in the game at the moment. The Carolina Accessories Voucher enables players to register the accessory set of their choice. There are 5 different sets, which include Trikis, Pythus, Predates, Insecurity, Juwoda, and Cantra. Trikis is for magic DPS builds, Pythus is for physical DPS build, Predates is for basic attack build that utilize added damage status, Insecurity is for summoner builds, and Cantra is for the tank builds. In order to craft Lucy's Fairy Accessory, you must clear Tell Harsha from Sohan Break Content, gather 72 Fragments, and upgrade Caroling Set to Lucy's Fairy Accessory Set. After that, you can use Lucy's Fairy Voucher to craft the whole set for free without using any silver. 
players can actually equip up to full goddess weapon and episode 12 will only provide two goddess weapon in order to get a second set of the weapons players can actually utilize level 440 legit equipment that they can get from the episode 12 one and then upgrade it into vasilisa weapons in order to do this players must apply plus 11 and hand and transcendent a scroll from the event shop these events are available from time to time so new and return players aren't going to miss out once you have the weapon ready, go back to the Goddard user interface and choose the Inheritance option. From there, they can upgrade the old legendary equipment to the new Goddess version. On to the next topic, players should work on the Episode 13 to questline to obtain all this reward. Some of the most important items are Refined Snake material, which player can use the material to upgrade their level 460 Goddess equipment. Additionally, I do recommend upgrading the Goddess equipment between plus 8 all the way to plus 11. Moreover, player can also increase the upgrade chance for the goddess equipment by using the enhanced aid that they received from the episode reward. The second most important item is actually the common virtual seal. This is also one of the most powerful items in game for your character since it provides multiple layers of bonuses. Players can also upgrade their virtual seal by talking to the blacksmith from Vermilion City. I also want to point out that it takes a lot of resources to upgrade the virtual seal. Failing to upgrade the seal will also destroy the items, so it's best to keep it at level 1. Players also receive 30 unidentified Mystic Tum, and each Tum will provide players with 4 Mystic Tum, which player can use the Tum to upgrade their art's attributes. And lastly, we have Monster Car Selection Album. This album allows players to select one of the three different powerful cards, which include Zora, Noel, and Sunwell. You want to pick up Zora cards since they provide percent physical defense bonus, and it is also one of the best in slot cards at the moment. Before we get into the endgame progression, there are a few currency that you need to know about them and how they affect your endgame progression. As you can see here, there are a bunch of different currency. However, the most important one is Mercenary Badges, Got a Token, Kingdom Reconstruction Coin, Content Point, and Silver. Players can farm Mercenary Badges and Got a Token through various content like Fuel Farming, Challenge Mode, Singularity, Wicked Boss Rate, etc. The only content that drops Silvers are F10 Challenge Mode, Singularity, Delmo Battlefield Heart Modes, and the new Heart Mode Turbulent Rain. Players can also use Mercenary Badges to purchase stuff like Extra Content Reset, Appearance, Car Items, Accessory, and many more. There is a 100,000 cap for Mercenary Badges that you can farm per week, and then you can extend the cap if you have premium items like Token and Mercenary Badge Vouchers. I honestly does not like the idea of having limited currency, so I hope I'm seeking with this restriction in the future. Moving on to the Goddess Token, players can use it to purchase items from the Goddess Token shop. One thing I do want to say is that there are a lot of stuff in this shop, so I won't be able to cover all of them. But some of the most important ones are Refined Visa Lisa Scales, Manic Fires, Enhancement Coupon, Authority, and many more. I do recommend trying to get all three Authority first because it is part of a collection and all your character will receive 2000 extra physical and magic attack status. One quick tip, player can also repair all of their equipment by using an urgent repair kit without wasting a single silver. Now, if you notice that there are two different goddess tokens, the new one is the Vakarang, while the old one is Gibija. Players can also convert Vakarang to Gibija at a 1 to 1 ratio by opening up the chain point shop in the Gibija category. Onto the Kingdom Reconstruction Coin, which is only obtainable through daily and weekly repetition quests, and players can start this quest after completing the Episode 13 quest questline. This is also where players get their hand onto the Goddess card, so I do recommend checking out Read and Reading Guides on this topic. The link to the guide will be available in the video description below. Now for the last one, it's the Content Point. Players can earn content points through various in-game content like channel mode, singularity, TBLs, and legend raid. There is a cap limit of 50,000 content points that players can farm per week, and players can use a content point to purchase gifting crown materials, special class costume, collectible costume, and special items from the achievement shop. One quick note, as a player, you want to unlock high level achievements as soon as possible, so you can start buying special Transputator, Light Bliss, and Condensed One. These are the upgradable materials for the Vivora and Demonic or the Goddess Inker, and they take a long time to craft them. Player can also buy extra hardball reset for Legendary, so having a ton of content point come in pretty handy. Welcome to the end game. This is where the grind begins, and here is the checklist of items and content that you should work on. Number 1. Start farming the assister. 
There are a lot of ways to farm the Assister, such as buying the Assister album from the events or Mercenary Bat Shop. You can also do Field Channel modes, which gives you two Assister album per run, or run weekly Assister dungeons. There is a lot of Assister combination out there, but my favorite two gold builds is Morning Ponya, Mirtis, Ignis, and Helga for the magic builds and then Nebulous, Skeklet, Mistress, and Bowser Manser for the physical builds. You also want two round and common sister. It can be any types because you want to get an extra damage bonus and reduction for the fuel farming content. Number two, always pick up your daily reward from the FI tab energy merchant. Players will unlock the rest second daily quest from the FI tab after completing the episode 13 one quest line. Player can also claim free gym abrasive, skill gym, or color gems at the gym merchant daily. I also recommend talking to the gym merchant in Capella City. Number three, do you remember that 32 multiplier XP term that you get from the episode 13 two reward? Now, you can use it and run multiple field challenge modes on the episode 13 maps until your character hit level 480. Make sure that you purchase a field challenge mode reset from the mercenary bat shop. Number 4. Work on the episode 14 one questline so you can unlock the more battlefield raid content. Number 5. You want to get a plus 20 Visa Lisa equipment and then convert it into the new level 480 goddess equipment. There are a few ways to do this. You can do a solo or hard mode for Saint Cecilium or field farming background coin, convert it into Kabija, and then purchase the scale material from the goddess shop. Keep in mind that you can do Chalamos or Division Singularity since these two content provide a ton of background coin. You can also do infinite Chalamos for the auto match version until you get a jackpot. The jackpot can go up to 2 million background coin. I also have a video that covers the new goddess equipment, so go ahead and check that out if you have the chance. Number 6, the next one is going to be the Goddess Accessory. You want to unlock and obtain Lucy Fairy Accessory as soon as possible and transcend it into Stage 8 so you can upgrade it into the Goddess Accessory. Do not bother in building the Lucy Fairy Accessory. It's a waste of time and resources and you are better off converting your Lucy Fairy into the Goddess version. To upgrade the Goddess Accessory, you need to clear Delmo Battlefield to obtain the upgrade material. Number 7, work on the Level 8 Color Gem. The physical build uses red gem and then the magic build uses blue gem. Players can purchase the level 8 gem abrasive from the mercenary bat shop and then use it to upgrade the color gem. Next, you want to roast the gem at the player's alchemist shop, which you can find anywhere in town, and then put your gem onto the level 480 goddess equipment. Number 8, Monster Car Albums. I recommend checking out my other videos which will explain everything you need to know about the monster cars. The link to that video will be available in the video description below. Number 9, Flame Earrings. I recommend buying the Fire Flame Earring Box from the Forgotten Token Shop so you can have something that fills in the earring slot for the time being. Players can also farm the Flame Earring material from the Memory of Flame. However, the item status are completely random, so this item will take a little bit of time until you land on something really good. Number 10, Bells of Insight. I recommend buying a random Bells of Insight from the market with two of the status from the list. It can either be Accuracy, Crit Brain, or Block Penetration. Once you get the bells, go over to the Pyromaster NPC and reroll the line that is not from the list until you get it. Player can also farm the Sinking Seizure Rage for the belt inside material and then roll one for their own. Once again, this item has a lot of RNG elements. Number 11, Bounty Hunts. I'd recommend checking out Scarlet76 Rating Guys on Bounty Hunt and Aether Gem. There is a lot of stuff that revolves around the title content and it's literally impossible for me to cover the whole thing in this video. Number 12, Gizzin Crown of Thorns. Player will receive an item called Gizzin Crown of Thorns after completing the episode 13 one questline. This is the ultimate endgame items and it takes a lot of time and resources to upgrade the crown. This item is a little bit complicated, but I will do my best to explain on how the crown works as simple as possible. Gizzin Crown has three different gem slots, which include Cyan, Magenta, and Black Gem. Cyan is an activation gem that requires Ectonite. Magenta is a saddle boot gem during the activation, and Black Gem is a passive gem that provides extra bonus status. Player must clear Rest Sacred Dungeon in either normal or hard mode to obtain the Breath of Powers and Rest Sacred Gem boxes. The boxes have a chance to give one of the gems for the Guilty Crowns or Prism Code. There are two versions of Rest Sacred Gem, which include Legendary and Goddess. The best way to get a Goddess Rest Sacred Gem is combine any of the Cyan, Magenta, or Black Gem until you have enough fragment to craft the Goddess version. After that, you want to open up the equipment storage and register your gems. In here, you can also upgrade the rest second gems. The prism code is the required material to upgrade a gem, and players can reduce the upgrade materials by using the rest second gem catalyst. Player must clear demonic sanctuary to obtain a bread of power purifier and rest second gems catalyst. Players need the purified bread of power to upgrade the guillotine crown. 
Purified Bread of Powers require Bread of Powers plus any of the Ray Material and Silvers. However, players can bypass the raid materials by using the Bread of Power Purifiers from Demonic Sanctuary and Enhancement Coupons from the Gabicha Goddess Token Shop. To activate the Guilding Crown of Thorn, hit the F2 key from your keyboard and click on the Common tab. In here, you will find a skill called Rest Second Liberation. This is a skill that allows players to activate the Guilding Crown of Thorn. Finally, your character equipment should look like this. Except for the Guilding Crown, since the crown level is shared between all your characters, Next, you want to get your Guarded Accessory to plus 16 and above, so your character will have enough gear score to enter the new Turbulent Ray for the solo version. I also want to point out that you need to clear episode 14 too in order to enter the Ray. Lastly, you want to spend most of your time farming the new map area to get the Sparkling Skill Gen Fragment and Goddess Inker. These two items will increase your character power level tremendously. Anyway, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this title content, then consider dropping a like and subscribe to the channel. My name is Sadoji, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace!